So this here is my beloved ThinkPad E320. And I've had this ThinkPad for like, oh, about uh, almost 11 years now. And it's been excellent. I love this thing. The keyboard is still amazing. I love the little trackpad nubbin, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, the usual ThinkPad stuff. But um, it's getting a bit long on the tooth, so I thought it's about time for an upgrade. But then I realized when I opened the thing up, instead of replacing the laptop, I can just update this thing from the inside out. So in this video, I'm going to be replacing the hard drive, the RAM, and even the CPU. Because this laptop actually comes with the ability to replace the CPU because it has a socket here. Which is um, quite uncommon in modern laptops. So before you start upgrading your laptop, you've got to do some serious research here. So the current CPU I have in this laptop is a second generation Core i5. It's a 2410M. It's a dual core. I currently have installed 8 gigabytes of RAM and according to the Lenovo website and their instruction manual that is the maximum amount of RAM you can have in this laptop. But after doing some further research I discovered that the CPU can actually handle a much higher capacity of RAM which is actually on the Lenovo website. So I'll be upgrading to 16 gigabytes instead. And this hard drive is a faulty 500 gigabyte hard drive. You can only manage like a couple of megabytes a second or something. I don't know. It's, it's pretty slow. So let's do the easiest upgrades first. We'll do the hard drive. Now I just need to remove these screws that are attached to the hard drive bracket. It's a one. It's a two. Bracket just pops off like that. And I'll say goodbye to this old hard drive. Goodbye, okay. Now I'm replacing it with this crucial MX500, a two terabyte model. The reason why I went for the MX500 over the, what was it, the BX500? The BX500 is slightly cheaper, that's true, but it comes with no cash. So I thought to myself, Look at the MX500, it's a bit faster, it's more reliable. No, the transfer speeds are more reliable, that's what I'm trying to say. Now this RAM cost me, I think it was a bit under 70 Australian dollars off uh, Amazon, which is, you know, pretty good value. I was looking at shops around some local brick and mortar stores and, oh, for the same amount, for the same speed, it would was like 130 something dollars. So I was like, oh man, I could buy a, another ThinkPad. That's how much this ThinkPad is actually worth. No way. So this is two 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR3, 1,333 megahertz laptop RAM, which will be running at 1.5 volts. Now, Lenovo claimed that... Um, the maximum memory capacity for this laptop is actually eight gigabytes. That is two four gigabyte sticks. But I looked up at the uh, I looked at the CPU, which is currently in this laptop, and it actually says sixteen gigabytes. So I'm putting sixteen gigabytes in. So remove these RAM sticks and put the new RAM sticks. Put the new RAM sticks in. Oh, but joy of joys. Mm, yes. Now, this RAM I bought off Amazon. It is a bit of a strange name. I have no... I've never heard of this RAM before in my life. But it does come with a well-known branded memory chips on it. Hynix. So that's pretty good. So that's the reason why I bought this RAM here. Okay. So one... Excellent. And now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the CPU. Oh boy. So let me tell you about this CPU upgrade. So after some research, I discovered that this motherboard in this laptop comes with a HM65 Express, HM65 chipset, that's what I'm trying to say. So I went to CPUupgrade.com. 
and there you can filter the potential CPU upgrades by the chipset on the motherboard and also the CPU socket. And this here is the G2 socket. So I hunted around on that list and I looked at various benchmarks and I found what I believe is the fastest CPU which will fit in this socket and also supports the chipset on the motherboard which is also within the same generation of CPU as this one here. Uh, the HM65 chipset does support uh, newer CPUs, like a year newer, third generation CPUs, but I went for another second generation CPU just to increase my odds of it actually working. Oh, here it is. Oh, there you are. Just look at my wonderful CPU. Ah, yes, look at the size of that die. It's a big one. It's got Chinese symbols on it. What, do, what does that mean? So I ended up buying a Core i7 2760QM. So it's a quad core. And this one here is a dual core. And to make matters even more interesting, um, this CPU here actually has a TDP of 45 watts and the original one has a TDP of 35 watts. And um, that is slightly concerning, but we'll talk more about that later. Anyway, according to the benchmarks, uh, this newer CPU is at least twice as fast. So first I will... Let's remove the uh, heatsink, shall we? This heatsink seems to have captive screws, that's pretty good. You really know a laptop is designed to be worked on when even internal parts have captive screws like this heatsink. It's amazing. Yeah, look at the difference between the die size between this one and this one. Well, the die would actually be like underneath. Oh, there we go. The CPU is underneath that silvery thing. Anyway, um, let's remove the CPU now that I have released the socket. Oh, yeah. Look at all those pins. Now let's have a look at the pins on this new CPU. I bought this CPU off AliExpress, actually. I think it was $70. I don't see any bent pins anywhere. It all looks pretty good. So there's an arrow there, and there's an arrow there. So that must just gently drop in. Very gently. Please drop in. Yes, it dropped in. Excellent. Let's tighten up the screw. So I just need to clean the old thermal paste off this um, CPU heatsink. There we go. That's not too bad, I guess. So, because this new CPU consumes possibly 10 more watts of power than my old one, I spent a few more extra dollars on thermal paste. Um, I was just going to use my usual cheap thermal paste or whatever, but I thought this CPU needs every little bit of help it can possibly get to survive on this cooler here. So this thermal paste is the SYY thermal paste. And the reason why I bought this one is because it has a thermal conductivity of 15.7 watts per meter Kelvin. And that is astronomical. Because most thermal pastes, like even the quite good ones, it's like four or five, you know. So this, this should be very good. Should be great. If I can open up the packet. Oh. It's like it wants to be used. It just launched itself out on the CPU. Thank you. So what do we have here? We have... Oh, look, it came with wipes. I'll start with a wet wipe. I will clean my CPU first, because that is the cleanest thing I have at the moment. And then I will clean the heatsink last, because that's the dirtiest thing. It's starting to look pretty clean. Now, dry wipes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's looking pretty good. What do you think? Usually these videos, I plan them ahead, but they just end up being me struggling to open up the most basic packages you could imagine. Okay, get this wrapping off here. There we go, that'll do. 
Now, how much thermal paste will I put on here? I am not sure. Such a tiny die size. But it does come with a application spreading spoon thing. I'll do that. Spread it around. I kept on reading on various forms and stuff. This SYY stuff is like really, really thick thermal paste, but it just seems seems pretty normal to be honest. I'm gonna apply a lot of pressure so I can get, you know. I don't want absolutely tons of this stuff on the CPU because it may not squeeze out. Okay, it doesn't look as even under the macro lens, but I think it's pretty good. Or maybe I'll just continue to OCD a bit, just a bit more. Just. Uh... Oh, I wonder what this one's like. Huh? What's that one like? No, that looks slightly worse. I oh, know I'm being very illogical. Should make no difference. It's just each time I zoom in, it looks like a freshly ploughed field and it annoys me. Look at it. It'll just squeeze out. Just... Uh, uh. Yeah, I'll just put tons of thermal paste on it now. Tons. I'll oh, squeeze it out like a graham cracker. This CPU actually supports up to 32 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz memory but I went for the um, 16 gigabytes 1333 megahertz memory just in case this CPU doesn't work then I can go back to the old CPU and I will still have the benefits of more memory I love these captive screws thank you Lenovo I keep on thinking oh where did I put those screws oh they're already there it's great. So easy. In fact, there's captive screws even on this back metal panel as well. It's like this laptop was designed to be taken apart. The uh, framework laptops of today uh, were basically the laptops of yesterday. All laptops are like that. Well, the ThinkPads were anyway. Now everything's soldered on and the uh, batteries aren't user replaceable you know things are going downhill like look at this battery here want a new need a new battery okay just keep on locking it there we go oh how easy was that I could, I could just buy a new battery for this too and just plug it back in amazing why can't they do that anymore huh Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. This is very nerve-wracking. Oh, we've got lights. Oh! Got the BIOS password. Operating system not found. It's working. I've got a quad core. I'm, into the, I'm in the BIOS now. Let's see if I can find the... There it is. <laughs> so it went into the BIOS. And look at that. Core i7 2760QM CPU. Oh, that is fantastic. But there is one more feature I really wish this laptop had. Currently this laptop is being charged with this big old barrel plug, which is quite okay. I do have two chargers that have this barrel plug on it for this laptop. Um, but if I ever lose one of these chargers, I have a dead laptop. So what I want is USB-C charging. So what I have done, I have purchased, purchased something very interesting. It's a USB-C power delivery trigger module. And I'm gonna be installing that in my laptop in the next video, because this video is long enough, okay. Goodbye. See you later.